This is a tutorial on ellipses as conic sections. When we create a conic section that's shaped like an ellipse, we get it for when our intersecting plane cuts through our double cone in such an angle that when we look down at our plane, we have this stretched circle at the intersection of these two shapes. This stretched circle is an ellipse. Now the equation of this shape, if this shape has its center at the origin can be written in a standard form and that standard form is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. An example of an equation of an ellipse written in standard form would be x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 is equal to 1. An example of an equation of an ellipse that's not written in standard form would be 4x squared plus 25y squared is equal to 100. Now we can tell that this is an ellipse because like a circle, both my x squared and y squared terms are added together. We can tell that this is not a circle though because the coefficients on these two terms are different. So if I take my double cone and I intersect it with a plane at an angle so when I look down I see an ellipse and if I were to imagine a coordinate axis on that ellipse, then I could take my coordinate axis and I could take my ellipse and I could put it on a graph and it would look something like this. Now, like the focus of a parabola, an ellipse has two focuses, or what we would say foci. And an ellipse is a special shape because every point on this ellipse has the same total distance to both of our foci. So for an example, if I chose this point on our ellipse and I measured the distance between that point and one of our foci and I called that distance D1 and then I measured from that point to our other focus and I called that distance D2, then D1 plus D2 would be the same for every point on this ellipse. So if I chose a different point on the ellipse, say I chose this point and I measured to one of my foci and I said that distance was D3 and then I measured to my other focus and I said that was D4, well then D1 plus D2 would be equal to D3 plus D4. In short, every point that makes this ellipse has the same total distance to both of these foci. So now let's talk about some terminology of ellipses. Every ellipse has two axes of symmetry. In this example ellipse, one axis of symmetry is the x-axis. Our other axis of symmetry, that's the y-axis. Whichever direction our ellipse is stretched more, that is our major axis. So in this example our major axis is the x-axis and our minor axis or the smaller axis is our y-axis. At the ends of both of these axes we have vertices. At the end of our major axis these are called major axis vertices or sometimes just vertices. At the end of our minor axis we have minor axis vertices, or sometimes these are called covertices. We also know about our foci. Our foci are always on the major axes. Now if our ellipse was stretched in the y direction further than it was stretched in the x direction, then the y axis would become our major axis. And then the x axis would become our minor axis. At the ends of our minor axes we would have our minor axis vertices or our co-vertices. At the end of our major axes these would be our vertices or our major axis vertices. Our foci are always on the major axis so now our foci would be approximately here. Now let's compare the shape of this graph to the standard form of our ellipse equation. 
Remember before I said A and B were constants that determined the shape of our ellipse. Notice that the A, or the A squared, is underneath the X squared term. That means that A is the distance from the center of our ellipse to the vertices in the X direction. This distance is A. And this distance is also A. Notice that the B squared term is underneath the Y squared term. So the B distance is the distance from the center to the vertices in the Y direction. So this distance is B. And this distance is B. Now if our ellipse is stretched in the other direction, well then our A squared term is still underneath the X, so this distance is still A. And this distance is still A. The B term is still underneath the Y, so this distance is still B. And then this distance is still B. In this example, B is greater than A. Therefore, our major axis is in the Y direction. In our previous example, A is greater than B. So our major axis is in the X direction. Now the last thing we have to discuss is how to find our foci. Well from the center to our foci, I'm going to call this distance C. Now if our foci are on the X axis or the major axis is in the X direction, then C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared. Notice that our foci are in the x direction from our center and that the a squared term comes first. If our foci are in the y direction from our center, then this distance is still called c, but to find c we use the equation c squared is equal to b squared minus a squared. Notice, because our C is in the B direction, or in the Y direction, the B squared comes first in this equation. The way to remember this is that our foci are always on our major axes. If our major axis comes from B being larger than A, then B comes first in our equation. If our foci are on our major axis, and that axis is in the x direction, then A comes first in our equation. So let's try finding the foci of this ellipse. This ellipse has the equation 169 times x squared plus 25 times y squared is equal to 4,225. Now this is not in standard form. So to put it in standard form, let's divide everything by 4,225. Then we'll end up with x squared over 25 plus y squared over 169, and that's equal to 1. Now this is in standard form. 25 is 5 squared and 169 is 13 squared. So think of this as x squared over 5 squared plus y squared over 13 squared equal to 1 and that means our a is 5 and our b is 13. Now whenever you're dealing with conic sections it's easier to sketch a graph to figure out what you're doing. If the center of this ellipse is at the origin and my a term is 5 that means I have co-vertices because A is less than B, five units from the center in the X direction. So say it's here and here. My B value is 13 
So from that center and in the y direction, I have vertices 13 units away from the center. So say that's here and there. My major axis is in the y direction because that's longer than the axis in the x direction, which means my foci are going to be on the y axis here. My ellipse will look something like this. Now my foci are some c distance away from the center. And because my major axis is my y axis, then c squared is equal to b squared minus a squared. So I can easily solve for c. I just plug in 5 for a and 13 for b. I'll have c squared is equal to 13 squared minus a squared or 5 squared. 13 squared is 169. 5 squared is 25. So we're going to get c squared is equal to 144. Take the square root of both sides and we're going to find out that c is equal to plus or minus 12. But c is a distance and we can't have a negative distance. So all we have to worry about is that c is equal to 12. That means that our foci are a distance of 12 along our major axis from our center. Our center is at 0, 0. So that means our foci are 12 units above 0, 0 and 12 units below 0, 0. So our foci are the points 0, 12 and 0, negative 12.